right, we're back on our SharePoint server, and as you can see, we are signed in as our SP admin again. And let's go to the desktop, and you'll see, yes, indeed, we are on GMSP-13, our SharePoint server. We've already got our disk in. Let's go ahead and let's kick off the splash screen. What the heck? Let's start there. You know, the boys at Microsoft went out of their way to make a nice splash screen for us. We might as well use it. And let's go down to Install SharePoint Server. Click there, and we'll have to wait while the setup prepares. Wow, that was very quick. Now it wants us to go ahead and find our product key, so give me a second while I put that in. There we go, and we can continue. And we will accept the terms of the agreement, we'll accept the license, continue. And this is what I was just talking to you about. It's going to ask us, do we want to go and do a complete setup, create our server farm, or a standalone version. Now, as you see, we only need to use Server 2008 R2 SP1, but we are using SQL Server 2012, just because it's latest and greatest. All right, so we're gonna leave it here on complete and choose install now, and there is our installation progress. Now, we're gonna be prompted throughout this installation process to go ahead and add in some information. We're gonna be prompted to do quite a few things. And I'm not going to make you sit here and wait while this goes out, so we will pause the recording, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Hello again, and here we are at the first pause on our way. We're getting prompted to run the configuration wizard. And as it says, to complete the configuration of this server, you must run the SharePoint products configuration wizard. What do you say? Do we want to? Well, yes, of course we do, and that box is already checked, because if we didn't, why would we be here? So we'll go ahead and click Close. All right, in order to continue on, we are going to need the name of our database server, which we have, and the username and password for that database access account. And remember, that was our SP SQL that we went ahead and created in a previous lesson. Let's go ahead and click on Next. Everything looks good in here. The following services may have to be started or reset during the configuration. Not a big surprise. IIS, SharePoint Administration Service, and the SharePoint Timer Service. Do we want to allow... The restart of these services if required. Well, yes, of course we do. Now, connect to a server farm. If we already have an existing server farm, and this is what we talked about just a few minutes ago, and we were going to add another SharePoint server, we can go ahead and we can do that at this point. But we are creating a new server farm, so we're going to check that box. Let's go ahead and let's select Next. Now, our database server. Our database server is called GMSQL-12. And the database name, and we will leave it at the default, SharePoint underscore config. This is where we're going to go ahead and specify that SP Farm service account that we created as our database access account. And if you remember, when we added that SP Farm, I told you that it was automatically going to get those security roles, those additional security roles and login on our SQL server. So, globalmatics slash SP farm, and we put in the password. Choose next. At this point, we're going to specify our farm security settings. What we need to do is create a passphrase, and this is going to be important later on if we choose to add additional servers running SharePoint to our server farm, our SharePoint farm. So I am going to, we're not going to use it because we are not going to add any additional servers at this time, but where we to at a later point, we would need to know what this passphrase is. So when you create it, put it somewhere that you can find it when you need it. So let's go ahead and choose next. Now we want to go ahead and configure our SharePoint Central Administration web application. This is the port where the Central Administration application is going to be. And this number here, 21113, is just a random port number that uh, SharePoint generated, and you can leave that, or you can go ahead and create your own. Now, I'm in favor of creating my own, simply because it's going to be easier to find and distinguish from if I need it later on. 
So I'm simply going to, for our purposes here, something very simple and easy to remember. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll go ahead down and look at our security settings. By default, it is set to NTLM, and that is what we are going to use. But you'll see that we can also go ahead and use Kerberos. Now, I will give you a little bit of a tip. If you're going to use Kerberos, get your Kerberos up and running first. Set up your SharePoint with NTLM. You can always go back later and change it to Kerberos. But if you work at it this way and things aren't working right with your Kerberos, you might run into a really difficult time trying to get it to all play nice. So get your Kerberos working first and then go ahead and change it back. So we'll leave it at NTLM. We'll choose next. And this is just a little bit of a check. We're going to make sure our database server is correct. The name of our database. Do we want to host the central web application here? There's the website, and you'll see there is the port that we just specified. NTLM looks great. We're going to go ahead and select next. All right, and it's at this point we are going to go ahead and pause our recording as SharePoint continues on with the installation. So I'm going to pause here. We'll be right back. This could take a while, so you might as well take a little lunch break at this point or at least go to the coffee shop, something. Don't just sit here and watch that green bar go across the screen. You drive yourself nuts. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back. Well, as you can see, our configuration was successful. Hooray for us. That is always, always good news, isn't it? So, like it says, we need to go ahead and click Finish to close this wizard and launch our SharePoint Central Administration website to continue configuring our SharePoint installation. All right, how about that? So, let's go ahead and let's do that. We will finish. All right, now I actually went ahead and I paused the recording there because it does take a couple of minutes for this to go ahead and get up and running. So, if it Seems to be taking a little while. Don't panic. I just sped up the process for us. We get this window that's, do we want to make SharePoint better? Do we want to participate in the Customer Experience Improvement Program? Uh, I'm going to say yes, even though this is simply a, a lab setup. It's not a production environment. Still, I'd like to go ahead and send that information to Microsoft because, you know, someday down the road, all of the information they gather may help us out. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And here we are at our central administration website. Well, that's a good thing. This means that up to this point, we've done everything right. When we got here, we know we're on the right track. We're greeted with a great big welcome, and we have a question. How do you want to configure your SharePoint farms? Well, there's two ways to do it. We can use the farm configuration wizard, or we can configure our farm manually. Now, if you have a lot of experience with SharePoint, you're a seasoned SharePoint administrator, you've installed SharePoint maybe 2010 many, many times, or maybe you've even started working with 2013 a bunch of times and you're comfortable with PowerShell, you're probably going to want to go ahead and do this manually all by yourself. And to be honest, that's a really, really good way to do it. It lets you configure the things exactly the way you need them right from the get-go. But let's be honest, if you're watching this course, you're probably not a seasoned SharePoint administrator. You're here because you want to learn. And if you're not comfortable with PowerShell, you're going to have a lot of trouble doing this manually. Because yes, there are wizards that you can use for the service applications. Individual service applications can be done one by one manually using wizards. At least most of them can. There are some that there's no other way to do it but with PowerShell if you don't use the farm configuration wizard. And all of that can get very complex and very confusing very quickly if you're not comfortable with PowerShell, if you don't understand all of that, if you're not experienced with it. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the farm configuration wizard. It's there for us. It does a pretty good job, but I'll be honest, the farm configuration wizard is not the best way to do it. And if you are a seasoned SharePoint administrator and you're watching this, you're probably yelling at me right now saying, don't tell them to use the farm configuration wizard. All right, calm down, guys. The farm configuration wizard isn't that bad. The farm configuration wizard's biggest problem is that it makes a lot of assumptions about the way you want to go ahead and set up your service applications. And, you know, a lot of the times those assumptions may not be exactly what you want or what you need. 
but it's not a big deal and especially for us because we're going to use it as an educational opportunity it's very cool for us to be able to go back in once everything is set up look at the service application say you know what this is not going to work the way i want it it's easy to delete them and then reconfigure them using those wizards or powershell depending on which ones we're talking about and we can go into more detail about them and i can show you all the steps and everything that you need to do in order to get some of these things up and running so we're going to go and we are going to use the farm configuration wizard and to do that all we need to do is click on that big button here that says start the wizard so we will click there and there we are on our services page now now look over here it says that the services require an account to operate and that's best practice for security you want to have a separate service account for these services now if you recall in a previous lesson we already created some service accounts it was our SP farm the SP admin and the SP SQL we're going to create another service account now we're going to need to go back to our domain controller and we're going to create a service account for these services and then we'll come back here and add it as a managed account in SharePoint so let's go ahead and take a pause while we move over to the domain controller all right we're back at our domain controller and let's go ahead and open up active directory users and computers and we'll go to our users folders and create a new user and we're going to create that SP service account I'm going to call it SP SVC and like I said before it doesn't matter what you call these accounts just so long as it's something that you remember I like to make it something that's obvious something that somebody else besides me might be able to figure out so to my way of thinking SP service sounds pretty good so we'll select next add that password and again probably not the best thing security wise password never expires but for my purposes I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there let's choose next finish now take a look there it is SP service that's great all right we'll finish up here at our domain controller all right and we're back here at our services page so we need to go ahead and add in that service account that we just created all right let's go ahead now we're going to take a look at these services there are quite a few of them some of them are familiar to you if you use SharePoint 2010 and there are a few new ones and some of the old ones have some new features we're going to go ahead and go back to the slides for a few minutes I'm going to highlight a few of my favorites and then we'll go ahead and take a look briefly at all of them and we'll select the ones that we want 